we are going to take a look at beam deflection, but we're going to talk about it through using fusion. So we in class, we've been working on beam deflection through mathematical calculations. Now we're going to use CAD to kind of confirm that math. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is actually create the beam. The beam can be whatever you need it to be. You need to figure out what unit you want to be in first. Most of the time, you know, in class, we just use inches. You can change it here, and you can change that over to meters, millimeters, all that kind of stuff. So I'll use meter for this one. And let's go ahead and just kind of draw the beam in. Just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say that the width here is one meter, and the length is, what, maybe five. And then we'll go ahead and extrude the beam a quarter of a meter. All right, so there is our beam. Now we're going to go and test the thing. Right, so design, and then we'll go over here to simulation. We're going to choose static stress. So we'll choose static stress, and then we'll say create study. All right, so there's a few things we got to make sure we do. We're going to kind of work left to right. Now notice it already comes up with study one. So it already assumes, hey, you're here because you want to do a study. We're going to go to materials. All right, so we can click on that. And right now it's the same as model. My default for the model is steel. But if you wanted to test another one, you would click right here on the pencil. And you'd say, you know what? Give me something else. All right. For now, steel is good. Now, if you do want to see the properties of the particular material, you can go over here to properties. And there they are. So you can see the density. You can see the gigapascals you know all the yield strength most of and what we've used in class we're using the emod right so young's modulus of elasticity so we'll be using that so that is the number that they're using to calculate it on all right so let's go ahead and set it up though first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate it around back because in this case it's going to be cantilevered so i'm going to go back here and i'm going to say constraint first one that pops up is fixed there's a bunch of other ones but right now it's just fixed so i'm going to click this side and that tells it, hey, it's attached over there. So I'll hit OK. And then I'm just going to rotate it around. Now I want to know how much weight or how much deflection it can hold here. So I'm going to go up here to loads. And what I'll do is I'll click the face here. Now obviously I don't want my force going that way, right? So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to choose the vector angle. Okay. So I choose vectors. And then really what I'm going to do is say, all right, well, that's not correct. Let's see here. Probably in the Y direction. What happens if I put a 5 there? Ah, well, that's still the wrong direction, though, right? I, uh, and let's put like a 1,000. So I'll say negative 1,000. And notice it's pointing down. And that's what we want. Okay, we didn't want it pointing up. So negative 1,000, and I'll hit OK. Now let's take a look. So it puts that vector right there at the end of the board. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go up here and you could say go ahead and turn this mesh on and I'll, I'll talk more about this in a minute I'll go ahead and click the eyeball here and it says the mesh has not been computed yet would you like to compute the mesh now let's say yes now what we found is that the the tighter we make that mesh this number generally gets a little more accurate so check this out if I go over here to edit and I say absolute size, and then instead of 10 millimeters, maybe I make that like three or four. All these triangles are going to get a whole lot tighter. And my answer is going to get a whole lot more accurate. It does take a considerable amount of time, though, so this should do fine. What we're going to do now, we could, if we wanted to, we could run the pre-check, but I can already see there's a check mark there. I zoom in, it kind of highlights those things, right? It says red, orange, yellow. Obviously, red means it wouldn't be able to solve it. Yellow means it's okay, but there's some things in there. Maybe you could do better. And then green means it's good to go. So now what I'm going to do is click solve. And it's going to come up and say, well, you need to use your credits. Because you have an education account, you kind of have unlimited credits for this stuff. So you're going to hit solve one study. This is where it's asking me, hey, man, you haven't really saved this thing yet. So go ahead and save it, please. Okay, so I'm going to put practice beam. So now when we do this, this could take a considerable amount of time. And what we've found, 
Um, it could take anywhere between three to five minutes. Now here's some critical things. It finished. And you can see it's actually looking in pretty good shape. I want to go for deformation scale because a lot of it's not going to bend that much. It's steel. So I'm going to say, give me actual. You can see it barely moves at all. Our safety factor we look tremendous on, but let me go ahead and close that. Let's zoom in over here and take a look-see at it. So if I click on the, this arrow here where it says safety factor, I can go down here to displacement. And that's really what I'm interested in. The displacement is going to tell me, hey, that's how much it's going to deflect. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. And you can see that the displacement is point, point 0.1475 millimeters. So that's neat. But let's change that over. So I've got, I'm still in displacement. All right, there's displacement. But now I'm going to change it instead of millimeters. Let's get it. Let's take it into like inches. So 0 0.005 or let's take it into centimeters. You know, so we can change those units at any time. You know, it gives us several different several different units to choose from. All right. Other tests we can run while we're here. We can take a look at stress. Stress is one that we would look at. It's going to be pretty minimal stress here. You can see where most of the stress is going to happen right up here, right? Because that's where it's getting pulled at. Now, we can also look at strain. And that's one we'll take a look at. Let's go back to that displacement, though. We can actually come down here and we can isolate things. So being able to isolate things does, it is kind of a neat little feature that we can use. Something else we might want to do. We may have realized, hey, you know, we're getting way too much deflection here. So in this case, we're actually in really good shape, right? We can tell because we can go over here to our, our safety factor here. We click on safety factor and we can see we're in a really good range okay so we're really good safety in particular I mean you can kind of see the scale here if we're blue we're good if we're red we're not good let's say though hey we made a mistake instead of steel that's just gonna be too much for us so let's go over here and let's make some adjustments let's say all right instead of steel like we used here we can actually edit by clicking on that pencil and we can say well I don't have the budget for steel so I wonder what other materials would get us there that maybe aren't as expensive so good conversation to be had right let's do it just for just for fun though let's test out like an ABS plastic okay so I've changed it now I'm gonna hit OK now you'll notice over here the results it gives you that that patented fusion exclamation point so I'm gonna have to go here I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna have to solve it again because I did make a change so I'll click solve this should look familiar so we're just gonna click solve one study and we'll let that thing run for a minute alright so it is complete we'll go ahead and close now and we'll say actual still close it again so now we look here the whole study is updated and let's go ahead and take a look at our displacement now so you see a considerable amount more so 13.44 millimeters of displacement and let's change that over to inches too so we can get a kind of comparison there's so almost a half inch of deflection okay so just by a different material we're seeing that we're going to see some changes with that right so let's take a quick look at the formula so just by looking at the formula we can see in the particular case we did adjust some things right we didn't change the force we didn't change the length however and even our, our moment of inertia didn't change, right? But our EMOD changed because we changed materials. So just by changing one of these variables, you know, we can expect things to happen differently. So, you know, that and that's kind of the relationship of what we're up to here. You know, any of these things could adjust and that's going to change our total deflection.